Hello, this is Brian Fisher. I'm a software IT specialist for IBM Tivoli Business Automation for the Southeast region. And today we're going to discuss how to configure the Tivoli Enterprise Portal, or the TEP, and the Tivoli Integrated Portal, or the TIP, for single sign-on. We're going to do this utilizing Active Directory Application Mode, or Atom, as our LDAP repository. Uh, and we're going to be utilizing our environment of IBM Tivoli Monitoring, or ITM, version 6.2.2, and Tivoli Common Reporting, or TCR, version 1.2.0.1, as the TIP instance. Uh, all of this will be running on Windows Server 2003 Standard Edition SP2. Before we begin, we must obviously have our ITM server installed and running, as well as our TIP server installed and running, uh, which I have already done so. and we have to have an LDAP server installed and running, which I've already done as well. So first we will log in to the TIP, and we will log in using uh, the TIP admin ID. Now this is by default the administrative ID that is created upon installation. It's so we log in, and uh, in order to configure single sign-on, we're going to need to first configure our LDAP repository. So we're going to go into security, secure administration, and in this configuration screen, we can scroll down. And we see here on the available realm definitions listed as federated repositories. Now there's a few other options. As I open it up, you can see local OS, standalone LDAP, or standalone custom. Now, uh, the only one you can't use for single sign-on purposes is local operating system. Um, you need to use some sort of LDAP repository. Uh, by default, it's listed as federated repositories, which I'm going to keep. And what federated repositories essentially means is that you can have multiple repositories, which will go down the list to authenticate a user account with. So we're going to use that and click the Configure button. Now, in the configuration box here, we see a few parameters. Uh, first, uh, we see the realm name definition. Um, I will get into that uh, in a bit. And we also see the tip admin as the primary administrative username. I will explain that in a little bit as well. But at the bottom here, which we're uh, looking, focusing our attention on now, is uh, the repositories. We have an internal file-based repository by default as the only one listed. Um, so we want to add another repository. Well, how do we do that? We click on the Manage Repository buttons right here, and we click the Add button. Now this brings up another configuration screen with uh, a repository identifier parameter, which we can type in anything we want. It's just a way to identify the repository which we're creating. So I'm going to call it Adam. Then we see a directory Type. Um, you see a listing here of, you know, uh, TDS, uh, Lotus Domino, Novell, Active Directory. But what we want is Atom. So we select Atom. And then we see a uh, primary host name. So I recommend using the fully qualified domain name. So here in my example is itm.tivoli.demo. And the port number, if it's a non-standard LDAP port, you can change that. And then we see over in security, we see uh, bind distinguished name. Now this is uh, the essentially a user account that's already defined in LDAP to which you're going to authenticate against for binding purposes. And I'll explain what binding means uh, in a little bit. But first, let's fill out the field. So we're going to have to identify an account that has the ability to browse on particular attributes for which we're going to uh, authenticate against. And these attributes or properties are listed in this login properties box. So if I select the UID here, which is short for user ID, I'm going to need to select an account in LDAP that has permissions to browse the directory tree on the UID field. So I'm going to open up my Atom browser. And inside of my base of DC Tivoli DC demo, we see here a user account of the name Tivoli Administrator. 
Well, it's asking me for the distinguished name. So I'm going to go in and look for the field distinguished name. And if I double click here, I can copy and paste it. <clears throat> so now I fill in the bind distinguished name and the password for that account. Now, as we described in the login properties, this is what we're going to use to authenticate against as the user uh, ID. So, um, as we saw, my CN or my name, my common name, is uh, for this account Tivoli Administrator. Well, I don't want to log in with the user ID Tivoli Space Administrator. Say I want to log in with a short name, a short name of, say, Tivoli. Well, I can do that by specifying a different attribute here in the Login Properties box for which to authenticate against as the user ID. And here I have UID selected. Um, but uh, if, if looks are important to you as they are to me, and you want to see their full name up top on the Welcome uh, uh, bar here, instead of seeing Welcome Tivoli as the short name, you want to see Welcome Tivoli Administrator, the full name, you can do that, but the only way to do so is by listing the attribute that contains the full name that you want to see as the first property. And we're going to go browse back to our Atom browser to find that property. We see here CN equals Tivoli Administrator as his full name. So that is the property that we want to use. If we were to browse the, the property editor here, we can also look at it here under CN and see it is, in fact, Tivoli Administrator. Uh, now, by if by default, CN is composed of a given name, which is typically the first name, in this case, Tivoli, and a surname, SN, which is typically the last name, in our case, Administrator. So, we will use the CN as, our, as one of our login attributes. So, we'll go back to the tip, and it has to be the first login property. So, I'll type in CN, and they have to be semicolon separated. So it'll first go and authenticate against CN and it'll list that as the full name in the welcome bar and then it'll authenticate against the user ID if I type in the short name in the user ID box. <clears throat> so that's how that works. Now we see some additional properties at the bottom are grayed out. Uh, we can't make a change to them until we apply the current changes. So I'm going to do that, apply and I'm going to click the Save button. And now we see uh, the Atom repository, as well as an internal file base repository, listed. Uh, now we need to go back to our federated repositories in order to make some changes here. Now we see we don't have a, uh, the Atom repository listed here as a base entry. It's because we need to now add a base entry to the realm. So we click this button, and it's asking us what repository you use. We only have one that's editable, and that's our Atom repository. And it's asking us for the base entry that uniquely identifies this, uh, this uh, repository, which I'm going to get back in our Atom browser. 